use this as a continuation session from the previous, if that's all right with everybody. Um, we didn't get into as much, obviously, since there's so many facets of social media. Uh, were there any questions after the last session? New faces I see in here. Are there any questions in general that, that you have that we can start off with? Or? Are there better links for business to business than just the open social media? LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. It is one of my favorite sites as far as that's concerned. Uh, it, it's more professionally geared. And Jeff, you actually touch it. Dana, can you pull up LinkedIn? Um, LinkedIn, uh, Mass Pitch, Networking, Plaxo. Yes, I'm not entirely familiar with, with many of those. Dawn stepped out for a minute. She'll be right back. She'll yeah. probably be able to, to address this more specifically. So but LinkedIn um, is. Uh, yeah, LinkedIn. Sorry. That, that's fine. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. Like, I'm not. It's in depth familiar with those. We just had a LinkedIn 101, so yeah, that was good. LinkedIn is like the big, more popular business to business. That's cool. I'm like, I'm on the five of them, not on top of like weekly. LinkedIn, fast pitch, networking, all one word, and Plaxo are the ones that I do the most. And they're all business to business. Well, they can fast pitch like a big phone networking. Yeah. Is that the second one or just that on? Yeah, fast pitch networking is called one. Oh, that's fine. Thank you. And class, though. So. <coughs> if there are any questions that you have, you'll be able to answer them. If you're the other one, just call us. Oh, you're not. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, um, so I mean, there's a lot of different sites. Um, the other nice thing about LinkedIn, MySpace, Facebook, is that a lot of, even Twitter to some degree, uh, businesses are, are starting to get more along this idea of, hey, we can reach instantaneous feedback with these people. Instead of shooting off an email, having it go through the email department to figure out which department it actually needs to go to, having it then go to this desk and then being addressed to this desk and finally winding up with this person she needs to talk to, who then needs to get approval from this person to send a response to you. They've determined that instant messaging, uh, you know, instantaneous feedback, <laughs> not, not to put a label on, on society at this point in time, but it's it's more of a me, 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 not an out sort of concept. If I'm looking for something, if I'm wanting to find out about it, I want it now. And a lot of businesses, again, are realizing this, and they want to, obviously, if business A over here can provide this information quicker and more efficiently than business B, business A is more apt to then get your business. They're more apt to get your attention. They're more apt to then reach out and, and do more things, which benefits them, benefiting you. Everybody's happy. So, um, welcome back, Mr. Kuga. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, there are definitely aspects. I mean, I know that as far as the pod camp planning things, we have, and I, on the back end of organizing all of this, have used each of these social media aspects. Uh, we've put ads out as far as MySpace. We have a, a MySpace event that was created. We have a MySpace page that was created. MySpace page? MySpace page that was created for it. Um, we have all sorts of different things to try to get as much reaching out there to do for it. And yes? Um, each of these social media tools is used differently in terms of business. Um, with, let's start with the big ones. With MySpace, you can certainly pay for ads on MySpace. You're going to pay on real money. You just don't. Um, what most people do, especially if they're um, independent artists or independent businesses, or if they are selling their own services, if they're a band, if they're a film, any filmmaker, uh, if they're an underground comedian, you know, pretty much any you, you can pretty much do anything you want to do. Um, I mentioned this earlier in the session. The way I started doing book reviews was I decided I wanted to review books, right? I teach English, I love books, I want to get into the publishing industry. So the best way for me to do that, I was a member of library, and have you heard of that? 
library thing. Do me a favor. On one of the tabs, book librarything.com. Library thing, and there are a couple of other ones. Goodreads is another one. I read. Um, and all of these have plugins that you can put on your Facebook page, your MySpace page, and little widgets that you can put on your own home pages. Um, library thing. Am I spelling my name right? Yep. <laughs> Dawn, what's your name tag? No, I didn't know. Um, this is my library thing page. Um, library thing is an incredible tool um, that, and I'll just say this briefly, we didn't talk about a lot of this before. Library thing is basically, I have a huge collection, it's not even a fraction of my collection of books, but I have a huge collection of books. What you can do is you enter the ISBN, you enter the, the author you go through, you select that you have that book or you want to get that book or whatever it might be. You can do reviews on this site, you can um, join groups and discussions about different topics, things like that. So I joined library thing and I wasn't sure how I was going to get to be able to review books without contacting authors directly or publishing houses. <clears throat> My cousin is a, a musician in New York. She has a MySpace page, and I pretty much railed against MySpace from the start. I'm not doing it. I don't want it. It's cluttery. It's, you know, whatever. The only way I could see her stuff was if I had a MySpace page. So I'm like, whatever. Sign up for MySpace. And when I started using library thing, I noticed when I checked in there that I was interested in books and literature, Suddenly, I was seeing all these other people that had no similar interests, and I started seeing avatars and comments being left by what, what it appeared to be books. So, let's say, Rose, let's say you're an author, and you just got a small publishing deal with a publishing house. Unfortunately, what happens with, with authors, they don't, you'll get, you'll get your, your upfront advance. You then have to sell that many books to get any royalties from that. So, and unfortunately, with smaller deals like that, they're not going to pay for a lot of promotion and, public, and publicity. So it's really up to you as the author to do that. Unless you're Stephen King or Anne Rice or one of these people, you're not getting major deals to do that. So what these authors are doing is they're creating MySpace pages for the book they've just published and for the book that they've just written. They then will go and contact as many people as they can. They'll go on to places like library thing. And they have, now they have what's called an early reviewer um, program. You sign up for it, and you put in for, I want, you know, they'll give you a list of books that they're offering for early review. And you say, I would like this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. They pull names out of a hat. You win, they send you the book, you do a review. Completely free. You keep the book. That's how most reviewing works. But, <laughs> Um, but with MySpace, people were coming out, and it's not just the authors themselves. Agents, publishers, they'll create, I have, on my MySpace page, I'm connected with a number of different independent agents in publishing houses who are promoting their own people's books. If they have a bunch of people who are coming out with you know, new novels in the next few weeks, they'll drop by and say, hey, come check out our page, or hey, so-and-so is going to get a new book, would you be interested in reviewing it? Um, so I used MySpace as a tool to start gathering all of these people that I had no idea were out there. I have friends, and I mentioned this earlier too, that use it as a tool for real estate. They'll put either their real estate company's name on a MySpace page, and they'll start contacting people. Same thing with Facebook and Twitter. Um, some businesses, it's easier to do that on, on MySpace quite frankly. You can reach a whole lot of people on MySpace that way. All you have to do is start commenting. It becomes viral. So if I want to start doing more book reviews, I go to this author's website and say, hey, I see you've got a new book coming out. I'd be willing to review it. Uh, just contact me and let me know. When other authors are on that site, they see, hey, this lady's is an author. Or rather, she's a, she's a book reviewer. I'm going to go to her page and see if she'll do my book. And it just turns into a gigantic snowball effect. And I right now have entirely more books that I can possibly read <laughs> that are constantly being sent, which is a good thing. It's a good problem to have. Um, Facebook is not that easy to do that with. Because Facebook requires, as you pointed out in the first session, requires you to have a first name and a last name. So you can't sign up as a business. Our Pittsburgh PodCamp site, is, we don't have an account for Facebook. 
We can't because it's not a person. Facebook requires you to be a person. The nice thing about Facebook, though, and how to get around this, is Facebook allows you to create events. It allows you to create um, groups. So, you know, in doing so, you have the opportunity to. Uh, all right, um, we have. John had mentioned in the previous session that, that we did this little softball thing. Well, the little softball thing had its own little Facebook group that was created. All of the people who were affiliated with this softball group were able to be linked into it. Any messages that were, you know, put up on that account then went to everybody who was in that group. Now, again, you have to add people to the group. People need your requests to be added to the group. But it's another efficient tool that gets it out there. It's a really good organizational tool. And what Facebook also allows is that you may be connected to a group or to a number of groups. What you can do is if I'm having an event, let's say I'm, I, let's pretend like I'm a fantastic author. <laughs> and let's pretend like I have a great new book coming out. And I'm going to have a signing party, okay? How would I get that word out? Well, I have all these social networking tools. I, of course, can go through my actual publisher and say, could you maybe do something for it? Um, I can't tell, they're not going to do very much. Yeah. I can create an event on Facebook and say, okay, look, I'm having a signing on this day for this book at this time. I'll be there from these times. Here's my email address. Here's the location. Here's the date. It'll set a reminder for anybody I send invitations to. I can send it to everybody in a group that I'm a, I'm a group of. So if I'm in a group of like 60,000 people, there are some of those on there, I can send an event to every one of those people. Uh, you, of course, as a, a recipient of that invite, you can decline and you, you, know, you can say, I don't want to receive this anymore, which is fine. Um, but you can't, I can't as an author jump on Facebook unless, unless I'm using my, I mean, it's not, I can't create a, a particular page for my book. I would have to be me. Yeah, it should, you have to do it as the author and then you would be able to list. It's a lot more These are things that I've done. It's, it's more difficult to do, it done. Now, as a business though, if you have the money, remember we were seeing all the ads on the side here, you can go ahead and buy an ad space. Same thing with Google ads. Uh, I don't know, if, how many of you use Gmail? Did you have you noticed that the along the side, every time you bring up a new a new email, anything it'll pick out keywords in your emails, mm -hmm. and anything you know starts listing along the right hand side. Also, there's a, a feed at the top, mm -hmm. and occasionally it'll do the same thing up there. You can select what you want to appear up there. Um, I think the nice thing about this is, is again you're paying for it, but it is specifically designated. Unlike the MySpace ads, where just anything and anything randomly picks up there. It is gearing it toward people who would be more specifically looking for what you have to offer. If you're an author, you know they'll give you, you know, books, publishing, whatever. Um, if you're a reviewer, they will give you books, publishing, whatever. Um, I'll give review. It, it, some of them are garbage. Yeah, it's it's garbage. Garbage. It's garbage. You'll, you'll learn, obviously, as you click on these links and go, oh, dear God, this is not what I was looking for. But it gives you something to look at. Um, I mean, if you completely exhausted all resources yourself, if you click on this link, it might give you something that you could, hey, I never thought of it that way. Something else, um, we, we talked we talk about the big ones. Obviously, if you have your own website, this is going to be a lot more beneficial to the business, especially the blog. Oh, absolutely. We brought up um, Rich from Aldo Coffee, uh, who is in the loungey lounge doing espresso and stuff like that right now. Rich maintains their blog for Aldo Coffee, it's a place located in Mount Lebanon. And the nice thing, I mean, how many of you know when you're being hard sold? Meaning you know when somebody is trying to sell you something, and how many of you absolutely loathe the fact that somebody who is coming at you like a friend, suddenly you hear the turn of the conversation, and you realize, oh man, really? You're gonna try and sell me this? Seriously. This becomes a problem for business owners. Here's, here's the all the coffee slide that she's been talking about. You can see that there's, obviously the person who notices all the coffee, there's this is the Twitter box. That's what she was talking about in the previous session about having the information right there on the site. The other nice thing, if you're going to be doing a website like this, keep it updated. That's the biggest thing that, that will help you out with it. If I am looking for something, I, I work for a law firm. When I'm doing research as to a company, as to a business, whatever, for whatever purpose I'm using it for, if I go to a website and I see that it hasn't been updated since 2004, obviously that information isn't going to be really helpful to me. If I know that that is their current website. Why hasn't it been updated since 2004? I just ran into this problem 
on the Thursday or Friday, I was so mad. Thursday or Friday, I was <laughs> I was ordering dinner. I was going home from work. <clears throat> it was Wednesday. I was going home from work because it was a bad day Wednesday. Yes, yes. I decided I wanted gnocchi and chicken. This is what I wanted. There's one place that I know that has exactly what I want. I didn't know how much it was. I didn't know what else came with it, what kind of sauce I wanted. So I know they have a website. I go to the website. I do a search for this place. It pops up the website in six different locations. Click, click, click. Does not exist. Does not exist. This is, how is this possible? It's business. How does it? Uh, well, I have a website. It's not going to be updated. Yeah, they had broken. So I called. Yeah. I called and I said, "Hi, I would like to order this." Oh, well, we don't have that anymore. Well, how was I supposed to know? Well, it's on the website. Guess what? <laughs> you don't have a website. Um, Your website doesn't exist. She did completely. Yeah. I was very angry. Like, you she were following me on Twitter. Yeah. The conversation I had with this poor girl. She was like, "Oh." Well, you would have known that if you read the menu on the website. There's no website. There is no website. Oh, I know it now. Well, this is a problem because now I'm not going back there, quite I'm frankly. Sorry. Yeah. And this is a bad thing. Why would you? Why would you? If you want information, why go to it? Precisely. This is my. This, I mean, this, this is obviously common sense to most people. But people don't actually think about it when they're putting together a business plan, when they're putting together their advertising, when they're putting together... The other nice thing is a website, and a lot of this, Facebook is free. Um, MySpace is free. Twitter is free. WordPress is free. WordPress is free. <laughs> so, I mean, all this stuff is available to you. Now, Dawn has DawnPapuga.com. You pay for the .com, which is... I paid $10, actually, for two years. Two years, 10 bucks. That's not much of a business expense, but you can put that website on stationery, you can put this website on business cards, you can tell people about this website, you can, you know, write it in graffiti on a wall somewhere. <laughs> it's not advocating that. <laughs> not advocating that. Not advocating that. I do. But, but honestly, you do that. Yeah. Well, well, something that, that, that's, that's good about that, uh, a recommendation that I do have, if you are going to create a website for your business, there's a difference between having a static website, which means that it's a website that just has information that you move through, that is just updated with the you know about section, where section, things like that, and a blog. If you're going to have a blog as part of your business website, it is really important that you update it and do it regularly. And also make sure that the content is content that you're going to want consumers, that you're going to want business potential business affiliates to be aware of. You're not going to want to be commenting about the fact that your daughter-in-law just completely peeved you off the day yeah, before. Not on your business site. Not on your business site. I mean, obviously content is going to need to be... The other thing that I absolutely loathe when I go to business websites is misspellings. On a per now, let me make a point about this. <laughs> Red pen of doom. I am an English teacher. Yeah. I have yeah. my mind with misspelling. However, on a personal site, that's your site, right? I don't care if you're using, you know, LOL speak or little yeah. emoticon. That's your site. That's your choice. I don't have to read it. That's not to stop you from yelling at me. That's, well, <laughs> well, you know. Um, <laughs> you're different you're different you're different different. you're going to get hacked on. That's all there is to it. But if it's a business site, what would you do if you went to a business site and saw a bunch of grammatical mistakes in this spelling? How confident would you be in that person's you know, services or business. Exactly. Not really. What would you do if you saw that? Exit. Next one. Would you? Exactly. exactly. I don't want to get on my it. I see those and I'm, okay, next website, please. This right. person's not in my business right. because, especially, what type of businesses are, are we looking to, to do? I mean, if, if I give an example. Anybody. Any kind of business. Any kind of books and radio. Books and radio. Okay. Books especially. All right. I can spell on my website an author's name. When I'm searching, my people are searching Google for this author's name. It is misspelled. Your site's not going to come up if this author's name is misspelled. Not so much the fact that the author's probably going to be a little peeved that you promised him that you would have this book review of. His name is misspelled. People aren't finding it. Here's, a, here's another good point. This has ramifications on your other business. Yes. If, if I am a potential client of yours, so to speak, and I see that I go on the Missy site, and let's say Missy does that, let's say she misspells the name of my business, or my book, or my, my actual name. 
And or let's say let's say we're talking. Yeah, we'll get talking. <laughs> but let's say let's say it was his business and Missy did that. Okay? I'm looking for people to to take on my business. Am I gonna want her to do mine if I see that she's you know misspelled these things or errors everywhere? Suddenly it wasn't my fault. Yeah, suddenly your representation of one person's you know, whether it's a, a band, a a book, a you know, personal business, whatever it might be, suddenly that becomes and has heavy implications for whatever potential following business you may have. Yeah, because people look at your name, oh, this is that person who's affiliated with that business. Oh dear God. Yeah, I'm def- no, don't do business with this person. You know, so obviously that bad business. There's another point that I want to make. Social net social networking is an interesting tie in with business. Okay? Because primarily social networking is done to be social. Right? You want to make connections, you want to make business connections or personal connections, friend connections, but then you jump to business and what you say on a personal level and how you respond and act and feel and speak is going to possibly be different than how you would present yourself in a business world, right? Um, if you are going to start using social media for your business, I would recommend that you start a MySpace page, a Twitter account, or a, a blog under that business name. And every single time you update any of that, you're wearing your business face. Every single time. No. Now, be careful though, because if people know that you're connected, there are a couple of people um, who are local media personalities that have a private account and they have their media account. They have to be careful who's following what, right? Because if there's any sort of mixed in that people could cross over from either or, media people, you know, if they're commenting on something that... It suddenly becomes an endorsement. Yeah, and that being said, they're now facing huge ramifications as far as their professional work is concerned. Um, the other thing that you run into is... Like, well, I think it was your product too. Yeah. So if you're if I'm a business and I'm saying I'm getting Verizon files, right, and I'm saying that under my business account, suddenly your business is, is Verizon. endorsing Verizon files, whether you realize it or not. By you saying that at the business level, that's what you're telling your your the people who are following you and your consumers. So you know it's a little bit more. You have to think yeah, a little bit think more ahead as, as far as with all of the social media in your business, you need to think about how are my consumers seeing this. How are my potential clients seeing what I'm saying? How are they taking that? And a really easy way, if you, if you have, I have a music group that's not really family friendly, we're not going to go into it here, but <laughs> I have a music group. I have a MySpace page for that music group. I also have a booking agent that books shows for this music group. My booking agent is Ross James. Doesn't exist. He is a fictional person, he updates everything, he handles all phone calls, he handles all emails, and he does this because I don't want people calling me, or being, or me being associated personally with that venture. So by creating this alternate personality, that allows me to continue living my own life. <laughs> but you also need to be aware that that then becomes an alias to that regard. So I mean, there are legal ramifications that can come into that. So I mean, if you are going to do something, you may want to consult with. I would re- I would recommend, honestly, instead of doing that, only because that would scare me in terms of legal ramifications. Not that hard. I would recommend. Um, it's very easy to set up um, email accounts that can be info at gmail or info. Don't at gmail.com um, or you know whatever it's going to well, be. Even, even the podcast site. Like, when we were setting up the podcast website, you know we were going through our whole planning sessions, and they specifically asked, you know, who can we have be the go-to for this? Now that just so happens to be me. So you know they linked on the website, you know uh, media contact and some sort. That goes to me. You can do just a for media contact press here. You don't have to give a name, you don't have to give anything. Um, what that'll do is that'll link to an email address um, you know, to bring it up. 
Or you can specifically specify, you know, info at podcamp Pittsburgh.com. So that, that will allow you to be able to, you should always keep a separate personal email as opposed to a business email. Um, only because having hundreds of emails come to you a day can be very overwhelming. If you're able to section it out, saying, okay, this is all my business stuff here, this is, you know, family, friends, you know, other stuff. I'm not saying not to hand them both out, but, <laughs> but it allows you to sectionalize things in a little, a little bit more clear way. Even yeah. more specific. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, this is just, you know, for AIP, mm -hmm. and then you have a personal email address. Yes. I have a website, and I have a software to use that rather than the net. That's why uh, it is useful because surely, you know, I get so so much stuff that comes in and I can decide, you know, do I want to deal with my students today, now, mm -hmm. or, or the other thing is I don't have time to deal with all my personal because I have to check on the students. I had the issue that I was teaching at four different schools yeah. and I was checking four different email boxes. And that, for me, was just unreasonable. I needed to be able to pop them all into one account. So I forwarded everything to my, my one email account, which then becomes very overwhelming sometimes. Yeah. Because, you know, well, it's facilitates things. You have to be able to send it back as that email address it came to, because otherwise everything then just comes in. And so that I was the problem I ended up running into. Yeah. Some of them, there, there's an option, I was using Gmail at the time, there's an option that allows you to re reply as. Yeah. Um, but you can't specify which emails go to reply at, it just becomes everything is yeah. reply at. Um, so I can send, I reply at this particular email address. Now, if you're all of them would be like that. I mean, if you have a reply at whatever you You can actually send that? Yeah. I didn't see that option. Yeah, you can do that. I'll try that. That would be awesome. Well, I was going to suggest that. I know that, I mean, if, obviously, if you're a business, you, you want it to come across as professional as possible. I mean, it would be something that you could speak with your in a web host or whatever to see if there was something. I know that my office has different emails set up for each of the uh, each of the employees. It comes to our main mail server, but uh, it's specifically set up that if my office manager wanted to do an auto response to somebody while I was out of the office, it wouldn't come through my office manager. She wouldn't be logged into my account, but she'd be managing that account and <coughs> up from her email address. So I mean, that, that would be something that, uh, again, you have to talk with specifically about them, but. Um, the LinkedIn, we pulled out before, I know you were talking about that a little bit. Um, we talked about how social networking is basically taking our personal networks and mapping it on a page. Um, LinkedIn does that on a very professional level. You'll see the same thing, it's a social networking, right? you'll see the same thing as the other ones, with you, you know, add a contact, add your information, you know, get a picture up there, do all these different things. But LinkedIn is very different from Facebook in my space in that it is only professional. You will not see people talking about, hey, this is where I did last weekend, or where are you going after the game? That doesn't happen on LinkedIn. LinkedIn was actually, it's in I think it's the Wall Street Journal not long ago, that they were talking about how people were being hired only through LinkedIn. Yeah. Having never actually had a face-to-face sit-down interview. Yeah. Because if you see here, you see these where it says 108 people have recommended Chris, all the recommendations that you usually, you know, oh, I need a letter of recommendation, or I need a contact or a reference, they're looking at your Yep. So he has 108 people that he has approved their comments and, and their recommendations for, that anybody can go through and read. And they're like testimonials. You've all seen testimonials on websites like, oh, this yeah. product is fantastic. Yeah. Right. It's the same thing, yeah. except these are professional. He has over 500 connections. So if you are, I mean, that's a lot of yeah, people. This, yeah. That is a lot of people. Um, I thought I was going to go to the <laughs> Well, Chris is a novel. Yeah. Chris is a novel. He is, he is not a novel. Um, but, you know, <laughs> yeah. you can, you can definitely, um, you can definitely customize this and how much information you want out there. Um, you can put your resume, you can put your school education, you can put uh, your background, groups that you're affiliated with, certifications that you have, your photo. This does not have a photo album like all the other ones do where you have like 30 pictures. It is your, this picture should represent you. 
This picture should not be like. Yeah, it should, it should not be used in there with two beers going. Ah, yeah, no, it's not, not that kind of thing. <laughs> this is professional. This is your business face. Yes. Um, the only other thing that I've seen in that spot instead of a photo is a logo for your yeah. business. So if you're running, if you're, if you're, you know, if your yeah. latest job is your personal business, yeah. put your logo there if you want, or put your face. It's up to you. What is RFS feed? I know it's your single TV page. An RFS feed. Is it over there? No. I didn't realize they have one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah they Under websites. Why? Oh, my RSS feed. Oh, oh, oh. <clears throat> His RSS feed. Basically, if you were to select that and you were added to one of your readers, your RSS readers, what would happen is every time Chris would update this page, you it would show up as, as a new item on your feed. So basically, instead of going, the, the beauty about RSS feeds, instead of going to everybody's website that you constantly want to read, I read. <coughs> I read a lot of blogs. I read a lot of blogs on a daily basis. I can't go to everybody's blog every day. Not only can I not do that, I don't remember everybody's website every day. But if I find something that I like and I find to be valuable, I'll add their RSS feed to my reader. That way, every day that I check my reader, all the blogs or people's posts like this, anything that has an RSS feed that I want to read, whether it's a, um, an, a journalist, on a newspaper, or whether it's a business website, or whether it's a person's profile updates, or whether it's somebody's blog. Everything that I have decided to subscribe to comes there. So you don't have to keep going back to Chris's page to read this Which and take the updates. I use Google Reader. I, I like That's Google Reader. I, I, I know a lot of people... And, you, and how did you get onto Google Reader? Did you do that for the what do you mean? How did I get up? Like, how did I get my stuff on it, or how no, did I no, I signed up for it? I signed up for people, and I had that little logo on the site. But how do I now amass other people so it's in the reader? I haven't. Oh, you, you have a Gmail account? Actually, no, I don't even have one. Okay. Here, so I, I, you don't even have to have a Gmail account. I don't think. Okay, well, it's all. I found that there's two ways that people are using our stuff. Some are using Google Reader for both uh, RSS feeds and podcast feeds. And also iGoogle. So if you just go to iGoogle.com yeah, yeah. and you log in with your Google account name, and you have a home page that you can drag stuff to, you can click and then add stuff to it, and, and it's an easy way for people to get it. The issue we have with our podcasts is some companies don't want streaming media or downloadable media inside their firewall. So this is my iGoogle page. But iGoogle. <laughs> Yeah, this is my iGoogle page. And you see here is my Google Reader. Now, I don't usually go through iGoogle. I have a, in my, in your G, when you set up for Gmail, up at the top, like right here, where it says images, maps, news, shopping, Gmail, mm-hmm. I usually am signed on to my Gmail. One of the links up here will be Reader. Okay. Um, and that's what this is. So I'm going to click on that there. You can see. You can put your Reader in your browser. Right, yes. exactly. Yes. Now, these are all, I have, you can see, where is it? I have 298 re- items to read um, since Friday. So, so I mean, that tells you how many I look at. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and there are certain ones, like, I have uh, William Shakespeare News from the New York Times, for example. It's one thing that I like to read. I have things all over here. I have them set up in, um... In, in folders, like this, these are all the people that I know from Pittsburgh Podcast, for example. So I have a bunch of these, you know, down here. Then I have uh, blogs, I called it, I labeled it Blogs Beyond. So these are people that I don't necessarily know, or they may be people that I know but aren't in Pittsburgh. I want to try and, you know, separate it out that way. I have, I think, one for books. I'm not sure. Yeah, I have one just for any Pittsburgh information that's not the people that I know and enjoy. And then I have... Uh, I had uh, publishers weekly updates. I'm sorry? Yeah. My what? Oh, there they are. So this, these are all um, these are all blogs or websites that have feeds, those RSS feeds, that update pretty regularly. And I, the reason I put them like that, and I, I put them in that hierarchy is, I'm not going to read all those publisher weekly articles every day. I just don't want to. <laughs> I'll get to them on the weekend. 
So I know that they're all there. I can see, like, they have email care. There are 82 from Publishers Weekly on that particular feed, or whatever it was, there. I haven't read that for probably three weeks. I, yeah. I mean, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. But if you had the widget up on your doorbell, uh -huh. would you then not have to sign into the idol? I don't want another thing I have to sign into. There's just too many other things. I, no, I agree. Um, I don't. And I think if you have the Google up here. Yes. You mean up here? Yes. I don't think you have to sign in. No, as long as you have it set up, it's, it's you, there. Install it. It asks you for that information. It's automatically there. You click on it. There's a box, yeah. and if you saw it, it said keep me up, keep me logged in on this computer. If you have that check when you sign in, it'll stay there, yeah. and you don't have to worry about it. It'll continue when you update. Yeah, These, good. this is a, this is pretty simple over here. You have all items me. I have 298 all together. Um, if I start something, I think these are over here. Right? These are items that I've, I've starred because I want to remember them or I, I want to write about them or connect them or, or link them for some reason. They're reminders for me. Um, trends and analytics thing, my stuff, things that I've shared, any notes that I've written on any of these. Let me ask you something. This is a full-time job. Do you make money from it? Perfect. Oh no, it's it's a bit of a No, I didn't to it. My question, no, well, I think my question gets a little bit um, more to that, is that my job is to be on top of news and policy for my the membership of my you know, for my membership. And literally I have a thousand items to read at any one time. It's like New York Times, Time Magazine, mm -hmm. Wall Street, you know what I mean? All, all the things. publications. It's all the major publications and then blogs. Um, and I'm some of them when I subscribe let me pick in that do I want finance or in that do I want you know news related to entertainment um, and some of them don't but even then it's like it's just too much are there, are there filters I'm missing or there are some but, but you, you have to create your own filters mm -hmm. and this is unfortunately like, 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 like I just scroll down a thousand news a thousand finance I honestly a while ago I <laughs> A while ago, when I, I was what, a couple of months after Twitter started, maybe I wrote a post on my blog called the Media Malaise. I was getting overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. I had blog, I had my Google Reader was overwhelming. I had you know Google or rather Twitter updating constantly. This is before I even got on Clerk. You know, there's MySpace, Facebook, my website, my blogs, my friends' blogs. By the time I got finished, it was like three in the morning. And I'm like, this is not working. I have a job to go to. Yeah. I have other things that I have to do. So, you know, even with, see, do you see how I did the hierarchy there? There are ones that I will read every day. Those are the ones that I have up the top. Other ones, I push to the bottom. I'll get to them whenever. I was so annoyed with the, the amount of information hitting me on a daily basis, I couldn't take it anymore. So I went through and I said, do I need these people? Do I need these feeds? Do I read them? Are they appropriate? Do I, I mean, I know that I like them when I read them the first time, but how often am I going to read them? Do, do I have to have that number constantly climbing and reminding me that I'm behind? It shouldn't be something that's giving you stress. If it's giving you stress, step back from it and then take a look at what you yes. really, really need. Now, for a business, it's a little bit different. For a business and for, for, what, for what you're talking about, you may have all these different things coming at you. Um, I would, again, I would prioritize. What are the ones that are the most essential that you read every day? Put those at the top. Whether it's in your Google Reader, whether it's in your RSS feed, whether it's in, you know, just your list of blogs that you go to or links that you go to. Put that at the top. Make sure you get those set aside. If you want to really boil it down, set aside so much time a day. If you want to say, I only want to spend two hours a day, take the amount of things that you have to read for whatever you're doing. Whether it's you know Wall Street Journal, you know whether it's the finance section, whether it's certain blogs that you want to make sure are updated. Say okay, how long does it generally take me to get through these? These are what I'm going to do every day. Set aside maybe an hour, an extra hour on the weekend. Say okay, well, now I'll read what I want to read, or now I'll read the other things that maybe maybe, I read. maybe they're more pertinent. Now of course you're going to shuffle that around. If maybe if there's some major trend coming along that you know you keep hearing about in your stuff. You may do a search and say, crazy, you know, feeds. I want to see what's out there now. Um, it's difficult. It can be very difficult. You have to be able to pull away and discern what is most important and what's helpful for you. Now, again, the other nice thing about the, the social media stuff, I mean, obviously, 
I don't think that there's a way that you can necessarily specific, specify your filters down to specific, this is what I want. I think that's I part of the question. Was, yourself. Yeah. Now, again, this is adapting. As people are saying, hey, I need this, the developers are working on aspects to create this. Like, even though there's not anything to do that right now, Google's probably getting all sorts of people saying, how, how do I do this? Or they're getting questions. This here is new. This only popped up recently. That wasn't in the original Google Google Reader, um, the shared items in the notes. When I first signed up for a Google Reader, you couldn't share things. Over here, these are people, these are my friends, that have shared items. If you look at the bottom, how about, we you click that, John? And scroll down, please. Right there, stop, go up, one. See this little button right here that says share? If I click share, then it will go out to the other people that I'm friends with on, that I've agreed to share items with on my Google Reader. Um, and, and so if I think it's important enough, let's say we're talking about finance, and I know that that's your interest in it. I get something on my reader. I don't know if you've actually signed up for that particular fee. I'll say, you know, share, and I'll send it to you. You can, you know, you read it. You option then to share it, yeah. and add it, and add it to yours, and be able to something that you would like to follow. This little share with a note, is relatively new. That's, I mean, that's within a week new. That hasn't always been there. I could share that item and say, hey, Bethany, I thought you might be interested in this. This is, you know, where I got it. If you're, if you're interested in more, maybe check this site out. Yeah. And then that will go directly to you. Um, the other thing you can do, too, is if you go to a site that doesn't have a segregated feed, you send them an email to their webmaster and say, I was looking at your RSS feed. I'd love to read it, but mm -hmm. I only want to subscribe to the finance and political area. I don't need your home tire. And, again, that's and they can divide it up a lot simpler and a lot quicker than you. And the smaller business, the more likely it is that will Because, happen. again, going back to, you know, kind of, you want to listen to the people. Mm -hmm. And the instant interaction, a business is definitely going to pay attention to that. That's something the business wants to pay attention to. Because, again, if it's too much information, you're going to stop following it. Here's another good point. I haven't brought on my Google here for a week. It's going to be scary. Yeah, it's scary. Like, you know what I've done before? I hate to say this. I hate to say this. I, I'm not even that. I will hit. <laughs> I'll see numbers climbing up to a thousand here. You know, I, what I'll do is I will be like, I can't even look at them. And I'll just go over and say, Mark, all is red. Suddenly I'm back at zero. I mean, <laughs> I mean if, I, if it wasn't important for the past three weeks, <coughs> then apparently it wasn't important enough for me to read. So to start from scratch. What I was going to say that's pretty important is. Think about the things that irk you as a consumer of media. When you're going to people's websites, noise. Okay. Yeah, all this stuff is very noisy. And, you know, just looking at everything I've seen in this last day and a half, where you all brought up pages, they give me the willies. There's too much stuff on it and it's too noisy. And I don't have to find anything. And then my own people oh, that sort of narrow it down, narrow it down, so yeah. that they have. So I call it the French perfume mentality, <laughs> which is why I used to stay away from my space because I can't stand yeah, like I said before when you have like the light flashing, like yeah. videos and music well, and my, my space is particularly obnoxious because they got rate your teacher and I've been flamed on that by two I've been yeah. I've been through right my professor dot com and the whole nine yards and that's I have does a lot that, of issues with that. Does that stuff catch up with you? Because sure does. Because I, I, I don't like, want the employer, the future employers to look at that and see some stupid student who has never should have been here in the first place, who is talking about I my, my supposed sex life. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like unfortunately, unfortunately, it will. If you were to pull out my name, I know, and I don't know if it's like that right now. I know that there are, um, um, for at least within the first two pages, yeah. uh, my name with rateryprofessor.com. I had three different sites. Well, it, it, or school it, it, in just in, in, just in, my, in Google, that will show up. And that's that's publicly available because I thought it was only available if you actually went logged on to my Well, the other information that you need to take into consideration with this is that people, if, if they're using those sort of sites to assess you, they're aware that just anybody can comment on that. It's not necessarily going to be a professional that becomes a problem. Sort of thing. Yeah. It really does because from a teacher standpoint, we have TEQs or we have evaluations that are done every semester. And those are 
those are monitored, and it's not like they can't say bad things there as well. But this is a site where you don't have to have your actual name. Yeah. So if I may write a fine evaluation of you in, in your class, yeah. I may go to rate my professor and I may just slam you under an assumed name and say horrible things. This is going back to what we talked about in the first session saying, well, what about these trolls? How do you stop them? Yeah. Unfortunately, you can't. Well, luckily for me, there are loads of students when these are all. These are. Doesn't matter. Loads of students went on to put their names on and said you're wrong. And that's see, but that's the nice part about that. I had um, I've had semesters. I mean, you can go back. It's good. Yeah. Well, you can. Let's not read. Can we just get rid of it? Thank you. But the point is, they're there. It's very uncomfortable because I'm not the only one who can read those. All yeah, everybody, everybody. And if somebody's flaming, then there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. But what I was going to say is, if, if when you're thinking about using social media as a business tool, think about, on a daily basis, the different business sites you go to. And think about what irks you. The things, okay? the things that you like about other sites. And think about things that you don't like. Maybe you bring up well, these individual feeds. Maybe that's something you want to keep in mind whenever you're creating a site. Okay, look. I'm aware that people might not want all of this junk piling into their Google Reader. Maybe they just want one aspect of the site. Create subdivisions. Yeah. You know, if it's too busy, get rid of some of this stuff and you know, put them on pages that people can link to. I have the same issue. I don't like whenever there's a million different things on one page and I get overwhelmed and I don't know where to find things. Yeah. If, I mean, think about the organization. Think about sites that you've gone to that you agree with and you think are helpful to you. Um, an FAQ page, frequently asked questions, can be very helpful to your consumers, and they can give you, you know, contact me here for this information or things that you know people have contacted you about. Put them up there. Yeah. FAQ. And, and common questions specifically, because if it's a question that if I go to your website and I can't find this, I have to ask this question. If you either fix it so that that information is available on the website, or like Don just mentioned, the FAQ. It will give people a place to go yeah. to try to find that question before they come yeah, in. Before, the before they email you and say, I want to find the first find information you've done. Well, your website like, should have been on there. We just no visited our website, and, and now I'm just thinking there are things that there were people finding about it. But something that we saw that we did incorporate, and I think there's a lot that we need to keep rethinking and incorporating, is that people want to see your contact information. They want to be able to put it on the front apps and put it on every single page. And that's something that really does frustrate me about a lot of sites. Is that yeah, they, not, don't, they don't want you to contact them. Well, absolutely. Or if, when they, if they do, um, you know, it's, it's solely. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a very basic, like, go at you. Right. Yeah. Contact. Okay. And one of the reasons I left my hosting yeah. provider was because I had no way of finding out their rate information. I, I scoured their website. Believe me. I scoured their website and I could not find out how much a rate was per month because I was in a yearly plan for a cycle. And I was like, you know what, I'm not using nearly as much of what they can I use. I mean, I'm using a fraction. I'm not paying $120 for a year worth of service. This is absurd. So I went scouring through saying, okay, well, maybe I'll talk to them about a monthly plan. How much is it per month? Couldn't find it. Couldn't even find how much it was per year. There was no rate information anywhere on their site. There was no one to contact. I couldn't get an email to a person. I couldn't get a phone number. That would really aggravate me. If, if it, that's me personally. Maybe it's my old school nature, but I wouldn't be able to talk to somebody if it's, if it's down to a problem. If you want my money, I need to have a way of contacting you and say, yep. hey, you overcharged me. Hey, you undercharged yeah, me. Hey, I need to do something different. But if you, if I can't call you, you need to get my money. Well, it's this like is the same company. Interestingly enough, this is the same company that at the turn of the year on, it was, I think it was like, I think it was January 3rd, they charged everybody. There was an accident in their billing. Somebody hit 2009 instead of 2008, and they charged everyone for two years. Took it off of all of their credit cards, and everyone got hit. And then they said, oops, we didn't mean to do that. We're going to go ahead and try and give you back your money. Well, they had had people, they had overcharged them. And I mean, my weekly $120 is one thing, but when you have businesses that are using that and they're being charged $10,000, mm -hmm. people were really upset. They made like, I think it was like 
<laughs> it was dream host. Was the the server that I used? Uh, no, it was awful. And I decided whenever I couldn't find any contact information, couldn't find rates, I said, you know what? I know somebody in Pittsburgh that owns a serving company. I'm like, contact Andy Quayle. He owns Chugu.net. I contacted Andy. I'm like, Andy, here's my problem. What kind of rates can you give me? He's like, here, I'll tell you right now. He went and looked at my stuff. He's like, you're ten dollars a year. Ten dollars for the year, it's including uploading podcasts, all of my content. Email, mailboxes, everything. So he said, like, you were being charged what? <laughs> and I was like, let's move. Off we go. And I mean, and he was there and, and talking. I mean, it, it, customer service is very important. A lot of these tools allow you to have incredible customer service. But I will warn you, if you have these tools and you don't respond to your customers through them, that will turn people off immediately. Absolutely. Immediately. They also know if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm selling something, let's say I'm selling widgets, which is a bad church, 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 which is Suddenly, constantly, I am posting about, hey, you know what? I am selling a dad. Would you like to buy a dad? Rates over here for dad. Do you want to be my friend personally anymore? No. And everybody knows. It's a hard sell. And like I said, everybody knows when they're being hard sold. Social media, the people, consumers of social media are highly aware of people being salespeople. The thing that I thought was stressed when we were talking about social media are business. How they use them is that the internet is a permission based society, and you have to ask people if they want something, you have to ask people if they want to get an email, you have to let the, and that's what's nice about podcasting is that it's a, a consumer based commodity where they say, I want this. They initiate I don't want that, I don't want that, but I want this and this and this. And there are a lot of people inclined to use something if they've chosen it rather than if you shoved it at them. Absolutely. Well, I mean, that's spam, right? At that point, it becomes yeah. spam. Unsolicited email or unsolicited contact. Nobody wants that. Does, does Facebook or you uh, they charge you like, like network solutions so they can reserve the other things for dot net dot com? No. If I, my Facebook account, or, well, Facebook's difficult. My MySpace account, Facebook is based on your email address, and, you know, it, it's a little bit, it's, it's done a little bit differently. MySpace is myspace.com backslash whatever your name is. So mine is myspace.com backslash we are tragedy. That's my MySpace page. You don't, because you're using their site. Now, my donkaflugia.com is different. I have a paid for that. I, I reserve that name, and... I've got it for two years, but nobody else can have it. Now, don't go do this. But everybody else in this room would go get dogapuga.net, dogapuga.org, dogapuga.us. No, they can't. I don't know already. So he owns them all. But you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. So if you're a business, and this is another way to protect yourself, I would recommend if you're going to get, you know, donsdoodads.com. Also get donsdoodads.net, dot org, dot us. Dot biz, dot because right now, as a matter of fact, it's funny. Yeah, everything. And you can have all of it. You can pop them all in, and, you can, and they can all lead directly to your main site. We're having a problem right now. Um, the should I drink that guys? They we've all been talking about getting a should I should I dot com. Like, should I read that? Should I drink that? Should I wrestle that? Should I do all these different things? It would be a great idea. It would be a lot of fun. But somebody knew the popularity of should I drink that and went and bought shoulddi.com. Okay. Now they will not part with that name for under $3,000. Yeah. Because okay. they know That's how cheap. badly they want it. That's how I lost my first name. I had a great domain name. And uh, I thought I had it for two years. I had it for one year. And somebody snagged it. Yeah, mm-hmm. bought it. What is it called when they do that? Domain squatting. Domain squatting. Yeah. Uh, after the debate, they went out and got JoeThePlumber.com. Yeah. I mean, as the debate was going on, people were registering that. There is actually a JoeThePlumber company. 
Alright, we are going to have to wrap up right now. Uh, if you guys have any additional um, questions, just please. please. I have cards. I don't know if you have cards. I don't have cards. Mm -hmm. But I will be over toward the mentor's launch. If anyone has any questions, I will be there. Feel free to stop and ask. Same with me. Um, quick point. I'm sorry, sorry Captain. I'm going to stop to you. But um, there's a session that was just added in room 420, I believe. It's how big businesses use social media. So or how big okay. businesses use social media. And that will delve more deeply into trying to think about That will be a big example that we've talked about. Yeah. So feel free to check that out if you want. Do you know what this is? It's now oh, at 2 o'clock in 4 o'clock. Hustle, hustle, hustle. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you, Thank you so very much. much.